Good morning, Rovers. It's December 10th. The weather has changed quite a bit since the last video, and it has gotten a little bit nasty. So the battle with the temperature has begun, but the mission hasn't changed. We're still looking to launch early summer, but today it's all about this forward deck. My name's Alan Mulholland. I'm a solo sailor, and this is the story of how I built my Wave Rover 650. Three years ago, I refitted a 40-year-old Contessa 26 and took her on an amazing 7,800 nautical mile ocean voyage. We crossed the Atlantic twice, but a knockdown on the second crossing and COVID-19 put an end to my solo circumnavigation. So now I'm building a new boat, smaller, lighter, but more suited for a solo circumnavigation. The Wave Rover 650. So in the last video, you saw me put the after deck on with some massive help from Mrs. Rover. So now it's time to crack on with the fore deck. So I'd just like to take a minute to walk you through my thinking process. So the forward deck, you can see it's a very small space. And what's really going to happen up here? Well, we'll, we'll have to have an anchor roller. We'll have to have a port and starboard mooring cleat. And we'll have to have some sort of big cleat, probably right around here, that I can tie off to. Oh, can you hear that wind? I mean, it is howling outside. Anyway, a big cleat dead center that we'll use to tie off the anchor roll to. So all that has to happen. Now in the plan, there is a beam that goes across here and we'll be doing that. I'll probably use a two by four uh, for that. And then we have another beam that'll go across here, across these two stringers, across the shear stringer. And then there's a longitudinal that comes up, a longitudinal stringer right down the center. Now, I'm going to do away with this longitudinal stringer, at least in this section, because that is just going to get the, in the way of my big cleat that I need to put on here. So, what I plan to do instead is, because the distances are so small, and there will be two beams, I will double up uh, the ply after I've got it bent on from the underside, and that'll give me the extra strength I need for the mooring uh, cleat. And then, and I'll make sure that span isn't too long. And then this ply right here, I will look, I'll, I'll think about this a little further, but my instinct tells me that I really don't need this longitudinal because the compressive strength of plywood over such a short distance, especially a good marine ply. And, and by the way, this is nine millimeter uh, marine ply, Maranti. So uh, that is considerable. When I, when I cut this forward piece of ply and I bend it on, I'll have a pretty good common sense feel for how strong it is. I'll also have to round this off because right now this comes to a point and the ply won't bend over, over that area. Anyway, a lot to do, uh, time to crack on with the very first job, which will be this beam right here. Okay, so what I've done is, I've just gone and grabbed just a regular piece of construction two by four. It's actually quite a nice piece, as you can see, um, pretty tight grain right there. So this'll be, this'll be actually way overkill for this little beam. So I just want to make sure that I have enough to span this area, and I do. So the next step is just to cut the camber that I want for the deck. And I've marked it out with, I want an inch and a half, which is the depth of this stringer on each side. And then I'll just put 
a nice camber up to this point. I predetermined that's as high as I want this deck. Now, I'll tell you what's going through my mind. This is a little working deck. And, you know, we're just going to have a couple of cleats. There's not going to be a lot of room to stand around on. So we don't want too much camber, but we want a certain amount of camber because the more camber you put in, that's curvature, it, it's like pre-built stress that you're building into the wood. It just makes your material, which is the 9 millimeter plywood, that much stronger when you bend it. So we want a little bit of bend, but not so much that you step on here, you feel like you're going to fall off. We also want to shed water. Okay, I think I've covered that <laughs> in more detail than I planned to. Time now to uh, lay out this a nice fair line. So head off over here. So I'm just going to put a little finish nail into this section right here, the top of the camber. That's good. I've pre-marked an inch and a half up from this edge. So this will be the bottom of our beam. This will be the height of the camber. And this is, again, the inch and a half that I need. I'm trying to get rid of this big spike knot. But this piece of wood, this, uh, this comes from a bed frame that I had made probably uh, five years ago. I'm repurposing it. So this knot has not dried out. So even if some of that knot is in, the uh, structure it's okay same with these these are all really tight you don't have to worry about tight knots it's loose knots you you, you don't want okay so now I'm just going to uh, set up a couple of stops to help me form this so I'm putting the edge of the clamp just on the lower edge of that line same over here then this is a piece of ash that I had laying around from a different project. Just need to hold it there and it forms a really nice curve. And uh, all I need now is another set of hands. Okay. Okay, pull that away. And there is our deck. Now I put it up about a quarter inch higher than what we need, but that's fine because we can rip this down. That's no problem. So next job is just to cut along this line. Now we've got our we've got our beam in place. Uh, we've got our center line lined up with the center line here, and now it's a matter of turning it into the, sh the shape we want. So I'm going to scribe a line on the bottom, and then we will uh, just this, using this as a straight edge. And I know that's the, the angle. Now, here's the thing. We'll be using epoxy glue to glue this on. So we're actually going to make this smaller than it needs to be because, again, the gap filling on epoxy will fill in the gap between this wood and here. So you don't have to burn through a lot of time trying to make a really tight joint. Uh, a loose joint will, will work just fine. All right, time to crack on.
So I've, uh, I've just finished machining this, so I put a little round over on it. What's the round over for? Well, it's not for any structural reason, it's just because the whole thing will be painted. If there's condensation or dripping that happens, it'll just go over the edge. It's just a little bit of finishing. Now, I know this is actually, it's a nice fit. It fits really nicely. And that is the first attempt. It actually worked out. Now, now Stephen, would you mind just coming to the side? No, I, I just want to, if we can show the folks how much bend is in this ply. So if you're looking at this and you can see it, what we're seeing is the wood is straight, but the ply has a definite curve from the compression of the two hull sides. So we're going to see if we can straighten that with this clamp. Nothing to it. So we'll just get this the right height. There. So what I'll do now is I'll mark the bulkhead out. We'll get a couple of screw holes in and then we'll do a dry fit with the clamp and the screws and make sure that we pick up this eighth of an inch. But uh, frankly, I'm really happy with this. It's straightened the bulkhead out uh, and it's a nice wide platform for the plywood deck to rest on. How does that look? Does it straighten it out? Oh yeah, nice. Okay. Alright. Get that out now. I'll stick the clamp up here. So we uh Tighten it up and then we'll adjust. Uh, let's come up over here. Yeah. How does our center line look? Looks like it's got to go a bit towards the starboard side. Oh, yeah. There we go. It's great. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty good. So having the center line set up, it's really a smart move. So I'll get our fasteners in now. Oh yeah, nice bit of squeeze up. Great, got a nice squeeze out all along. And we're just going to stuff some um, thickened epoxy just into these two grooves and down into this corner. See, we could probably use a little more clamping pressure right there. Yeah, there we go. Nice to see it, the glue just come right out of the top. That little bit of squeeze out is terrific. just putting this clamp on because there was just a little tiny spot over here that wasn't as tight. I mean, there was still glue coming out, but it wasn't as tight as the rest. So 
Um, this just makes me feel better. I don't want to put an extra screw in at all. I, I'm always trying to use the minimum number of screws possible. So I'm happy with the beam. It's glued on. I've created nice little fillets. Can you catch those, Stephen? Um, they, they look pretty good, one on each side. And now we're just going to put a heater in here and tarp over the whole thing and leave it overnight. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, you know, we're battling the elements. So this is our this is our tactic now to get the glue to go off. It's actually only two degrees Celsius in here. We need probably a good 12 degrees for this glue to work. And this little space now is being heated. And then on the front here, you can see I've I've got a little blanket over top. Uh, this will probably, I'm thinking, give us a temperature somewhere in the order of about 20 degrees and we'll, we'll check it in a few hours. It's a nice, <laughs> comfortable minus five outside. It's about six o'clock in the morning. And we're just going to check to see how this glue joint fared out. Uh, you can certainly feel the heat in here and there's the thermometer wow showing 25 degrees so we certainly had the heat in here now oh yeah yeah the glue joint is nice and hard let me see if i can get a little bit of light on this Yeah, and yeah, it's nice and hard. <clears throat> now, don't worry about being overly neat because this is the pocket that we'd be putting the beam into and it's all going to be filled with gap filling epoxy so you really want to have that little extra bit of space around here so that the epoxy can do its work Okay, we'll stop it there and we have to of course do the same to the other side. Now we'll go grab the beam and we'll get it generally, uh, we may have to custom fit this a little more, but don't, don't spend too much time on this until, the, until you ha actually have the beam. Okay, so I've selected just another 2x4, I've cut it down to, actually this was a 2x8, it was left over from the mast, it was a fairly nice piece of wood. It has a great big knot right here, but that's fine because this is the portion of the beam right here, comes up to this point. So I'm uh, going to cut this curve with the jigsaw. Apart from this, the layout of the lines, everything is the same as the last beam.
Gut. So now we'll just uh, cover this up, put some heat on it, because right now we're about zero degrees Celsius in here and we need to get this temperature up. So I'll, I'll get the tarp and the heater on right away. We'll take a look at it in the morning. Well, we have the whole thing glued up now. I have a longitudinal connecting the bow to this beam, which is in the plan, and then the plan had actually called for an extension of this longitudinal all the way to that beam, but I'm not sure what sort of cleat I'll be putting on, so I've changed the design a little bit to put these two uh, longitudinals in. Now, one of the things that happened when I was machining this little beam here, I didn't realize there was a knot in the center. Now, over on this side, the knot came out right there, so it's just traversing a small area. I did router out that area and when I put the beam in I filled it but I left this section in this uh, top bit because I was um, I, I needed that structure to fit this longitudinal uh, nicely. Now when it when it comes time to glue the plywood down I'll take a router and I'll router that bit out and then we'll be filling this with a thick, thickened epoxy anyway to put the deck down. So we, we, the knot will be gone and it'll be replaced with a epoxy wood flower um, microfiber uh, mix, which will be very strong. It'll be as strong as the wood itself. So we'll have regained the strength we need mm -hmm. in the beam at that point. Uh, the second thing is we have uh, the whole inside of this crash bulkhead area has received two coats of S1 already. So the next step will be to get two coats of S1 on these beams and longitudinals, as well as the underside of the plywood. So that's what the uh, project is today because it takes about six hours between coats and I want to get two coats on everything. Plus it's minus eight outside and it's not much warmer in here, so I'll, I'll be tenting this to get the temperatures I need to accomplish the, the S1. And S1 is like a very thin penetrating epoxy that is great for uh, preserving wood. Well, that's it. I have secured the deck with, again, the minimum number of screws. There are six screws holding it, uh, eight screws holding it down. And... I've gone on the inside and I'll show you that right now. So I'm just using my little flashlight here to illuminate the space, but you can see I actually have really good access under here, uh, better than I thought. And as a result, I'm not going to S1 any of this stuff until after I've got it glued and I'll just heat this space and S1 it at the same time. So I'll uh, let the glue set off and S1. Uh, Right, well, that's going to speed things up a little bit. And it's, a, again, a really nice, fair curve to the, to the deck. I'm um, pretty happy with that, and it's really nice and solid with the extra longitudinals that I put in. And this little gap that you see along here, well, that's, uh, yeah, that's a little under an eighth of an inch. It's... Um, you know, probably a millimeter to two millimeters in some spots. That's just going to get filled with thickened epoxy. And then at a later, uh, at a later time, we will round this over, cut out some of this glass, and then bring our heavy uh, biaxial fiberglass over the joint. And then, of course, cover everything in a 10 ounce cloth like we've done already. Uh, the second thing I just want to explain, I was, uh, 
I went back and forth on this in the last episode. So um, I'm, I'm still using screws to secure temporarily the deck. So I'm just back to the little project screws. They're only a little over, I think, an inch and a... They might be an inch and a quarter in length. So uh, I'm going to have those on there until the glue sets up. After the glue sets up, I'm just going to back those out. I've done this a lot in the past. And because they're only going down an inch and a, an inch and a quarter, I'll drill them out with like a 3 uh, bit. And then I've got a whole bunch of syringes I can use to put epoxy into those holes. And then we won't have any issues whatsoever. Of course, everything gets glassed over at the end. It's, I'm not worried about water penetrating from outside the boat. I'm more worried about condensation occurring inside a void space. Anyway, let's crack on with the big glue up. Okay, we, I have this surface wetted out. I just wanted to stop and show you the knot hole here. You see how I've routed it out and um, it's kind of interesting the way it, you can see the dark patch in the upper right quadrant of it. That's uh, where I've already routed out from the other side. So there's plenty of thin epoxy in there. And now we're going to fill it as we put the adhesive on to hold the deck down. All right, time to crack on with that. Well, it's the next morning. The glue is absolutely hard. So this is a good time to remove all the screws. But look at that. Again, a really nice fair curve. Not too much camber, but just enough to shed water and add a bit of strength to the foredeck. Okay, I'll try to do this on camera. So these, these uh, the glue is hard, but these screws generally uh, come out. Nothing to it. We have to use a slightly longer one here. All right, I'll remove the rest off camera and uh, yeah, we'll get some S1 on the underside. So quite a liberal coat of S1 has been applied to the whole surface. It, uh, it's pretty tight and awkward, so I wasn't able to film it, but this is, this is the result. It looks good, and I would call this area pretty much complete with the two coats of S1. Well, the S1 is cooking right now, hence the reason it's covered in this blanket. Uh, we're just going to let that cook while uh, overnight. Now, it feels great to have the boat at this point. You know, between the aft deck and the fore deck, we have 40% of the boat enclosed now. 
Now I have to admit the fore deck and the after deck were really the easy bit. Now in the next video, I'll be fitting the aft end of the cabin with its big, beautiful camber. Now I've decided to postpone our uh, discussion on the sail design for a little while because I mean I've, I've done the design, I've uh, checked all my work and I've sent it off to a sail maker and I'm just waiting for the sail maker now to send me back a few photos that'll make it a lot easier to talk about the sail. Uh, I can tell you this uh, it, it will be a controversial video it, simply because people seem to hold very very strong opinions on, on junk rig sail design and, and I've already received some of those opinions and I've taken it all on board and then what I've done is I've looked through the lens of my own experience on small boats and being solo and I've made the design appropriate for what I have in mind. I can guarantee you this, that the design will be appropriate for a small ocean going boat, especially for a solo sailor. And it'll be keeping with the Wave Rover philosophy of keeping it simple and rugged. Now, until next time, thanks for watching and have yourself a very Merry Christmas. I'd like to take a moment to honor the Wave Rover benefactors. So what is a benefactor? Well, these folks have made a contribution of $100 US or more to the project, and their names will be affixed to a bulkhead inside Wave Rover and will be traveling with me on our circumnavigation. Now, these donations truly are much appreciated. Well, the Wave Rover patrons, with their pledges of support, really do make the creation of these videos possible. Now, if you'd like to know more about Wave Rover's patron page and Benefactor's Bulkhead, I have links to both those pages in the video description. Now, another way to help Wave Rover, and it doesn't cost you a dime, is by sharing our content on your social media. So now, as always, Rovers, thanks for watching. Give us one more. Brilliant.